everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all great. First off, we're not talking about my hair. Had a plan for it. Don't turn out how I wanted it. We're not talking about that today. Today we're talking about the Spanish flu. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, in 1918 there was this kind of massive epidemic, I guess. Yeah, well, more of a pandemic. Um, and I researched into this whenever coronavirus was first like, coming around. And I find it really kind of a bit relaxing reading about how over 100 years ago they managed to deal with it. So we can deal with it, I guess. But yeah, I'm going to be talking about the Spanish flu pandemic. And if you're interested, then keep on watching. It's the deadliest infection like pandemic in history. Over 50 million people were affected by it. This is one third of the world's population at the time and one fifth of the world's population actually got infected with it, which is insane to think about. Now obviously in 1918 medical records weren't as good and they didn't keep track of things the way that we do now. So it's unsure how many people died. It's a really big estimate. It's between 20 million and 100 million. And that's obviously a really big gap. But like, even if it's 20 million, that's still a lot of people to die look at the current coronavirus like how many people has that killed not 20 million that's for sure now the reports vary so much but the kind of majority of sources i looked at said the death rate for if you got it was about 10 percent and compared to normal flu where the death rate is 0.1 percent so this was a lot more deadly than the normal flu that the people in this time were used to and compared to coronavirus its percentage of death is a lot higher coronavirus it kind of varies everywhere to be honest um it depends where you look the death rates vary from 1.5 percent to 10 percent i read an article and it looked at i think it was south korea because they've got like the best kind of tracking and they keep tabs and everything more and their percentage was 1.8 percent so i'm more inclined to go for that one and literally everyone who gets corona like it's so rare that you die like i know a lot of people are dying that's just because of the spread of it like it spread to so many people that more people are dying but compared to the people who are surviving this virus it's really like such a drastic difference no i just want to briefly look at kind of why it's a pandemic you know what makes a pandemic a pandemic so pandemics start off as epidemics and for it to become a pandemic it has to be announced by the who which is the world health organization and there's no kind of set number, like it doesn't have to kill a certain number of people or be in a certain number of countries. It's just kind of what the WHO say. And it really just depends. So for it to be classed as a pandemic, it has to be a new disease that people are not immune to, there's no vaccine for, that is spreading at an unprecedented rate around the globe. And it's like spreading to all four corners. So this is what makes a pandemic. A lot of people say obviously Corona is a pandemic, like we know this. But the WHO also said the swine flu that happened about 10 years ago, they said that that is also classed as a pandemic when compared to coronavirus, like what even did that do, you know? To this day, we're not really sure where it came from. There's so many different reports and it, obviously it's known as the Spanish flu, but I would get into this in a little bit, but it definitely didn't come from Spain. So there have been so many reports though. Spain say it came from France, a lot of people think China, America, Europe, UK, everywhere you look, there's different people and different experts saying different things but the truth is we don't know where it came from so obviously at the time world war one was going on and that's kind of the world's main focus and in the trenches there was a disease which it pretty much was the spanish flu and it, it like affected a lot of soldiers a lot of soldiers died from this as well like so many died and this accounted to low immune systems and malnourishment they, this didn't help the soldiers at all so the main spread of it is whenever soldiers returned home from the war they spread it to literally everyone because they were like bringing it overseas and stuff and this is why the disease spread so fast now this kind of annoys me but some reports say china because there was lots of chinese slaves at the time and they would be transported they'd be transported in like boxes for six days overseas to france and they would complain of feeling ill and doctors would just say this is chinese laziness it, obviously it's not because it's just like they were racist at the time towards chinese and People still are, but we're not going to get into that. Um, and over 90,000 of these Chinese slaves were brought over. So think of how many people were transporting the disease. I think this definitely accounted for like the disease, but 
it's not the Chinese people's fault, like people say, because they didn't have a choice, they were slaves, you know? But a lot of people believe the first proper, like, confirmed case was in Kansas, which is in America. And there was a camp, like a military camp, called Camp Funston, I think, in Fort Riley. And on the 4th of March, a, like, soldier, he went to the, like, medical ward there, saying he felt quite ill. And by midday that day, 107 other soldiers had all the same symptoms. This disease spread so fast, and obviously because they're soldiers, they had to go to war. And at this point, the war was still going on. So they were like transporting it everywhere without really knowing and meaning to. And this virus was long, like it was about 15 months long of it all, which is insane. And like towards the end, it wasn't as deadly, but it was still like killing a lot of people. Now, the question on everyone's minds is, why is it called the Spanish flu? And this is because it's quite actually simple. So in the First World War, Spain were not involved, so they were kind of like, I don't know the word, like neutral. And all the countries that were in the war didn't want to, like, affect the war morale and affect the people. So they kind of hushed down all these, like, rumours about, like, flu. But Spain didn't have a reason to do this, so they widely reported on it. And obviously when other people saw these reports coming from Spain, they were like, Spain has got a pandemic, Spain has got Spanish flu. So it's kind of just miscommunication, and the war massively impacted the entire Spanish flu, to be honest. And I'll get into that again later. And Spain, obviously, they were good. They warned, like, the UK. In early spring 1918, they sent a letter over to Britain and they were like, yeah, we've kind of got this, like, disease thing going around. And within two weeks of receiving this, over 100,000 people in the UK had got infected. It literally stopped at no one. In Spain, the king at the time got it. All these leading politicians got it especially people who lived in areas that were like quite crowded or didn't have good sanitation 30 to 40 percent of these people got infected so obviously like the poor got the brunt of this because they didn't have like the funds to keep themselves as clean as the rich people did and obviously news got to the uk and the newspapers tried to like kind of quench it all down and they said that the spanish weather was what has caused this because they have like dry windy it's very hot and they said this was perfect breeding ground for the virus but the uk with its damp weather it would kind of quench the virus and they were just trying to like stop people from panicking but obviously this didn't work it kind of gave people a false sense of like safety even though it is known as the spanish flu the world health organization have like officially changed it to be called just like the 1918 pandemic just like kind of variations of that Obviously, most people do kind of know it as the Spanish flu, though, which is kind of shitty towards Spain, but what can be done about it, you know? And the weird thing about this virus was it wasn't killing elderly people like they first thought, like, as much as it was killing younger people. Very young children and elderly people were not really, like, the people being affected by this. It was mainly people between 20 and 40. And it's thought this is because the elderly people had obviously seen different variations of the flu before and survived them. So they had some sort of immunity, which kind of helped them be more immune to this. But obviously younger people don't have this. And some other factors that did not help were like malnourishment and people just like living in crowded areas. They didn't have many funds because obviously everything was going towards the war. And a lot of the doctors were obviously over at the war helping out. So the country was very unprepared, well, the dry world was. Let's look a little bit more at flu itself. So influenza, shortened down to flu, it hacks the respiratory system, which basically means like the breathing. It's highly contagious as well, so this is why it spreads so fast. So when an infected person talks, coughs or sneezes, little droplets of the disease transfer everywhere and this is how it spreads. These can be like inhaled by anyone, they land on surfaces and people touch them and then they get the disease too. A good sign of this disease at the time was from the lack of air, people get like dark spots on their cheeks and this was kind of like, if you had these dark spots, then, then people knew you had this. And contrary to like popular belief, it's a virus, not a bacteria, so it can't be treated with antibiotics. Other symptoms are fatigue, loss of appetite, dehydration, headaches, you get nosebleeds as well, which is quite random, and sweating. Speaking of sweating, I'm sweating so much, man. It's so hot today, and I have to close my door and my window. Hot bunny. The most dangerous part of it is like how it affects your lungs and stuff. Like your lungs literally fill up with like fluid and then you drown. That's literally it. It's a horrible, horrible way to die. And people would like get it because they transfer it to surfaces and then they like to hutch their nose or mouths and then they get the virus. So it's just very, very dangerous. This least sounds a bit familiar to what we're going through now, if I'm being honest.
So people who are normally at risk of like the flu and this sort of virus are very young children, elderly people, pregnant women, people with like already having conditions like heart disease, asthma, and malnourished and like kind of people who lived in crowded areas, like I've said. And weirdly, this virus kind of preferred men like more men got infected than women obviously except pregnant women so now we spoke about the basics let's take a more detailed look into the timeline of events so the first wave hit in spring to summer of 1918 and the first wave was not the most deadly this was the second wave that was the one that killed it spread around the world quite fast considering normally mass travel was not done Sorry if the lighting's a little different, um, my ring light broke and <laughs> I don't know how much longer it's going to last for so I need to stop blabbering on and get on with it. So yeah, like I was saying, you couldn't really travel unless you were earning a lot of money. Um, but because of the war, soldiers were going all over the world and this was what helped to spread it. And this meant that like the first place that was kind of um, hit in countries was like the ports and the airports, just where the people were like travelling to. And then it would spread all around the country and it was going everywhere. It spread into mainland Europe, India, Hungary, Germany. But it was reportedly no worse than a common flu. It was just spreading a lot more. Like people weren't really dying at any insane rate or anything at the moment. And it first hit the UK in June. So it was June 25th, 1918. And Glasgow was where the first case was confirmed. And the textile industry got hit really bad in the UK. So this one factory it had i think it was like 400 it had 400 workers and in the space of one evening 80 had to go home sick which is insane in the space of six months the us had an extra 12,000 deaths relating to flu which people weren't really that concerned at this moment which they should have been the symptoms of the first wave were just like a normal flu you know like chills and fatigue and it pretty much dwindled out you know and people weren't really that concerned so america shipped their troops out as they were planning because What's there to be worried about? It's just the flu, right? That's where they were wrong, kids. So let's move on to the second wave, which was the one that kind of affected people the most. This was in, like, fall of 1918. So troops were kind of returning home, and this is where they were spreading it, mainly, like, troops were, like, travelling around the world, returning home. And it's thought that it was mainly affecting younger people because troops were going to see their families and their girlfriends, and obviously their parents weren't going to be super old. And this is kind of why younger people were affected more like another reason everywhere was just badly affected but i'm kind of mainly going to be focusing on the uk and the usa in this video but yeah like if you want to research any more then you obviously can but people would literally wake up feeling a little bit rough and then on the way to work they would die that's how like severe this virus was and obviously a lot of doctors went in the country they were out helping like, the war efforts so the country well all countries were just very un underprepared. No one had really anticipated a pandemic happening, so no one really knew how to deal with it. Some countries weren't really affected, like China and Australia, they kind of survived because they had strict quarantine measures put in place sooner rather than later, and this helped so much. So to stop the spread, obviously, some things were put in place. So the link was made between the disease and like kind of big public gatherings. So these were stopped. People had to wear face masks out on a public places like schools were closed because they were boarding schools. They locked people in instead, which I couldn't even imagine. I would cry. Theatres had to close. Libraries had to close. Like people couldn't return books to libraries because like germs. Churches were closed as well. People were told to stay indoors. Stores even limited people going in. All this sounds so familiar, doesn't it? And and in the US, the life expectancy dropped by 12 years for the average person in the space of a year, which is insane. Obviously, this is how many people were dying from this. And one thing that was very highly banned was handshaking and kissing because this was kind of direct contact with the parts of the virus that could spread more. The streets were all being sprayed with chemicals everywhere, hoping this would, like, kind of kill the virus. People were told to wash their noses with soap and water morning and night, to sneeze morning and night, to eat porridge? I, I don't know. They were meant to walk home from work, go on walks all the time to keep healthy. They had some really weird things. And in New York, the Boy Scouts, if they saw people spitting in the streets, because spitting in the streets, they made it illegal at this time, which honestly should be illegal all the time. Who spits in the street? You're disgusting. Um, Boy Scouts would hand people a card saying you are in violation of the sanitary code, which I find hilarious. Just the fact that people feel the need to spit on the street, like, dude, you know, are you okay? Obviously not. And obviously all these public places were closed. And this meant that they were being used as like makeshift hospitals and all these like medical people who are still in training oh, just put powder everywhere. 
they were being dragged into it and they were like being told to help with this pandemic but there was no cure there was nothing to help these people like everyone was at a lot now uk people specifically were told to drink red wine to drink like oxo cubes like beef stew beef broth you know they were told to cover their nose and mouth and lots of newspapers i find this disgusting they were like falsely advertising different things saying that it would help to kind of improve businesses like businesses would pay newspapers off and some of these businesses were like for vitamins and for mints so like people were just taking advantage of course they were you know it's a pandemic they can and cinemas were told every three hours to like ventilate out the, each room and i found out cinemas in wolverhampton which is quite close to me they banned children and they like ripped up all the carpets as well <laughs> which I find pretty funny. Different places in the UK were saying different things. Like, the government kind of gave advice to the different places, but they didn't have any set, like, strict rules like they do now, you know, with, like, government daily briefings every day and stuff informing us what to do. They didn't have that. So different places were saying different things. In Hackney, they were told to isolate and if they felt ill, to stay in bed. They were also told to gargle so salt water. In Cumbria, everyone was given disinfectant, as you do. And it, it was insane. People took advantage of this so much. Like, there were so many more fires and burglaries and there was less, like, emergency services to help out. And with no vaccines, doctors didn't know what to do. The thing that they found was helping was transferring blood from recovered people to sick people. Like, this didn't really do loads. They were, like, trying everything. They would, um, like, make the patients lie in beds, like, that were soaked with water and, like, sprinkle water on them, hoping it would help. Honestly, they were doing all these crazy, crazy things. They were also doing electric shock treatments, which I can't even be surprised about. So one thing that doctors thought would help was aspirin. So doctors would prescribe aspirin, and they would provide 30 milligrams a day. And now we know this to be a very toxic and deadly dosage. And the, like you're not meant to exceed four milligrams a day, which is like what they say now. So they were taking a bit too much then, and this kind of caused poisoning from it. And a lot of people died from this, so a lot of people died from kind of misinformation from the doctors, which I find insane. People were using herbs as well, like witchcraft, yes. I found that quite interesting. So I read a report about a woman, and she stopped a doctor in the street, just because she had like a few minor symptoms, she was just asking about him. And when they were talking, this woman dropped down and collapsed. She was dead. That's how fast this disease, like, took hold. The economy took a massive toll, like, there were no trash men, so there was trash everywhere. Businesses were forced to shut down because they just couldn't afford to stay open, which sound familiar. And I find this a really interesting fact. And so in San Francisco, people were fined $5, which at the time was a lot of money, if they weren't wearing face masks in public, which I think we should do now. Because more chance of getting a virus in them if we're not using face masks and there also was a bit of famine because there wasn't enough food because farmers couldn't harvest because they were ill and all these extra dead bodies they didn't really have anywhere to put them and there were too many of them like funeral parlors were overrun they literally had no way of dealing with it funeral parlors were literally increasing their like business by 500 percent like extortion honestly i think Families will literally have to dig their own graves. Government said that, like, no kind of fancy caskets could be made. It had to be all, like, plain ones because it was quicker. Mass graves were being used, like, in the Black Plague. I find it insane. Honestly, it's not healthy to have all these dead bodies lying around, so they had to get rid of them somehow. And in Philadelphia, which is one of the worst hit places, I'll talk about that in more detail in a bit, there was kind of, like, this space where they were meant to put 36 bodies, but they put 500 bodies in it insane honestly it wasn't healthy to have all these bodies lying around with all these germs like they wanted to get rid of them they actually had piles of bodies everywhere like in kind of old people care homes the old people would be too sick to like move the bodies so they'd just be like bodies lying in the corner everywhere it's disgusting very unhygienic and obviously there was no funerals allowed because like it's a mass gathering there was no vaccine as well like this strain of flu was new oh, that rhymed there was no vaccine and there wasn't even a flu jab invented at this time. The flu jab was released in the 1940s so people didn't have that kind of immunity so the flu was a lot more common to like get. And obviously places that social distance sooner they saw better results than places that didn't. And now I'm going to talk about Philadelphia and why they got hit so bad. So obviously when the second world war ended a lot of people had like these kind of parties and stuff and this kind of helped the spread of the second wave. And in Philadelphia, they had a festival plan, like kind of a parade thing called the Liberty Loan Parade. And it was kind of to build the bonds of government officials to kind of celebrate stuff. 
This is then September of 1918. Philadelphia was quite a big city with a population of 1.7 million people. More than 200,000 people turned up to this. And obviously, when there's a pandemic, that's going to spread the disease. So this is why it spread so much in Philadelphia. 24 hours after the parade ended, 118 Philadelphians were described with having these symptoms. One day after kind of Philadelphia announced that they might have a problem, 31 like of the hospitals were filled in like every single bed. Like they could, they could not fit any more people in any more hospitals. One week later, almost four. One week later, almost 5,000 people were dead because of it in Philadelphia alone. On the 3rd of October, the city was completely shut down to stop the spread. How many people in the army got it as well? Like, 40% of people in the army were, like, getting infected with it, which is insane. And the second wave, obviously, was the most deadly, as you can tell, because of the spread of people coming home and stuff. But there was a third wave, and this was in spring 1919. It wasn't as deadly as the second at all. It's kind of just, like, a mini kind of blip. It mainly affected Spain, Serbia, Mexico and the UK and it did result in quite a lot of deaths but it was way less worse than the second one and it was kind of just an isolated place in the US like Los Angeles, you know, um, New York City, Memphis, Nashville, San Francisco and in the summer of 1919 it kind of stopped and this was when it was kind of officially not a pandemic anymore, you know, it wasn't like a big threat and people who had got it once in these other waves are immune to it which pretty cool you know there was actually a fourth wave in spring 2020 but this was like literally nothing compared to the rest of them it was just in kind of some parts of new york uk scandinavia austria 28 of the u.s population were actually quite infected with this disease which is crazy to think about and kind of up to october 1918 so the death rate for america was 200,000, and that was just like a little bit of it which is insane so in the UK, this is absolutely insane. A quarter of a million people died. 228,000 people died of this, which is insane. I just want to compare that to the amount of people who have died from corona in this country. When I was researching this, the number was 43,000. So compared to corona, this virus killed a lot more people, so we don't really have anything to be worried about. In a single year of this pandemic, more people died than what they did in the Black Plague, which was four years long. There were so many like villages in places like Alaska, Greenland, that were overcome by the virus and were totally wiped out. Oh my god. This is why we don't talk with when we're doing our lipstick. In India, 12 million people died. Which, insane, insane. Some survivors of the Spanish flu are the reigning monarchs of like Spain obviously at the time, reigning monarch George V of the UK, President Roosevelt, Walt Disney as well. In 2008, kind of an investigation proved why it was so deadly. Like three genes in it enabled it to kind of attack like the bronchial tubes I think they're pronounced and that like that kind of clears the way for the bacteria to go into the lungs and that's why it was so deadly so the pandemic was able to spread because of all the slaves going around the war like i think the main reason was the war because everyone was focusing on the war so much that they kind of didn't pay attention to this until it was too late which is really a shame but like obviously the war was a pretty big deal like it's the first world war you know pretty insane so the world had a lot to deal with in this time as well and this is why it's so important to social distance this actually proves how important social distancing is because the countries and places that social distance had less deaths. I'll put some graphs up on screen that I found and this just kind of proves that social distancing and quarantine does work. People who are like breaking that now and going out to see their friends, shame on you. We still have coronavirus around and we will have more cases if we don't kind of quench it before we start having our lives fulfilled again I guess. But I was so intrigued by like, seeing pictures of people wearing the masks and stuff. Like It's so similar to what's happening now. Obviously now we have so much more like medical knowledge and stuff. So we're able to prevent so many deaths that they couldn't. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Like, comment and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. I'm just growing a little family over here. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.